On May 7, 1907, 11 physicians and scientists gathered together at the new Willard Hotel in Washington, D.C. to found the American Association for Cancer Research, the first organization in the world with a dedicated focus on high-quality, innovative cancer research. Their mission was to further the investigation and spread the knowledge of cancer. The 11 founders consisted of five pathologists, four surgeons, and two biochemists. This group was a veritable who's who in cancer research and treatment of the day, including such renowned names as Clues, Coley, Loeb, and the first AACR president, James Ewing. We have to go back to the first to understand the accomplishments of the American Association of Cancer Research. Dr. Donald S. Coffey is the Distinguished Professor Emeritus of Urology at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Dr. Coffey is a fellow of the AACR Academy, a longtime member of the association, and past president. Now, in 1907, if you take a look at this, this is just a few years after the first airplane, and of course, the radiation had been discovered and X-ray had been discovered, and the background for cancer was primarily that cancer could be identified by looking at it through a microscope. And the only people who can tell you have a cancer is a pathologist. And this was from the Germans who had looked in with the first microscopes and noticed that the cells were all crumpled and different. There was total disorganization. So most everyone at that meeting uh, were pathologists for looking through the microscope. Cell pathology had just started. And number two, they were surgeons. They only had two biochemists or chemists there at the time. So that's where we started. Later that year, the first annual meeting of the AACR took place at the Loomis Laboratory of the Cornell University School of Medicine in New York City. Topics at that first meeting included such rudimentary research as clinical transfusion and serum reaction in carcinoma and sarcoma, and transformation of carcinoma into sarcoma. The real growth here of the American Association of Cancer Research is they went from the first meeting up at Cornell with about 25 people showing up for the national meeting to what we have now. And so it's a totally explosion of information. In 1953, Nobel laureate and AACR fellow James D. Watson, along with Nobel laureate Francis Crick, discovered the double helix twisted ladder structure of deoxyribonucleic acid, known as DNA. This landmark in cancer research yielded groundbreaking insights into genetic code and protein synthesis. And then came the real breakthroughs when it became apparent that there was something wrong with the DNA in cancer, not only in the chromosomes, but in the sequence of the DNA. Whole groups of people studying this DNA and how it was mutated and changed. It was amplified, it was rearranged, it was mutated, it was turned around and twisted. And then the big thing, it is epigenetically changed, meaning that you can reversibly change the sequence of the DNA by adding methyl groups to it. The great bulk of it, 90 over 95% of it, is regulatory in some roles in which it's DNA that's being transcribed into RNA and this RNA is not read into protein, but has a regulatory role. And this is the red hot area of the moment, non-coding RNA. Dr. Margaret Foti is the chief executive officer of the American Association for Cancer Research. She heads up a staff of 220 professionals and scientists dedicated to the mission of the AACR. Since our founding in 1907, the American Association for Cancer Research and its members have been at the forefront of every major advance against cancer. Together, we have made spectacular progress, saving the lives of millions of people in the United States and around the world. But our work is far from done. The ability to prevent cancer would, of course, be the ultimate way of winning the war against cancer. Dr. Nancy E. Davidson is the Executive Director of Oncology for Fred Hutch University of Washington Cancer Consortium and the President of the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. 
Dr. Davidson is the president of the AACR. We have available to us now several well-defined screening technologies for various types of cancers. Over the last decade, we've come to recognize the value of lung cancer screening with low-dose CT scans. We've been able to refine our understanding of mammography. We're able to improve our cervical cancer screening by looking for HPV in addition to abnormal cells. And of course, we now know that colon cancer screening should be the norm for all adults over the age of 50. And more recently, we've been able to develop antibodies that actually can help to augment immune function. So these are all outstanding opportunities for us to take research from the bench to the bedside, to conduct the appropriate clinical trials to understand what these therapies do and don't do, and then to take that knowledge back into the laboratory to try to solve those problems. We need to develop the next generation of cancer researchers and cancer doctors, and you can't start too soon. In the AACR, we have high school programs to bring young people into our meetings um, and to help to galvanize their interest in cancer from a very early age. We're also big supporters of students along the way, uh, medical students, our pre-doctoral fellows, our postdoctoral fellows. Uh, once individuals become young scientists, we want to make sure that they maintain their interest, that they have the skills that they need to advance their science. And of course, we want to make sure that people stay in the field and that they grow, that their skills continue to develop. So even slightly more mature scientists like myself um, will continue to have a productive career contributing to our goal to really change the face of cancer. The AACR members are the brain trust of the cancer field, all disciplines, all sectors, and all stakeholders. Therefore, we have a responsibility to defeat cancer by applying our enormous intellectual assets to the conquest of cancer. With all of the new technologies available to us today, the next decade of research will bring new breakthroughs and surely be a time of even greater progress against cancer. It took me quite a while to get a grip on the fact that this was a terrible disease I had. I went to my doctor, sent me to a specialist, and they said, you have something that is very probable, cancer. I was diagnosed uh, at 38 years old with triple negative breast cancer. Uh, it was just a month before the Christmas holidays and my 39th birthday. I was in medical school at a time when most people died from cancer, most all people died from cancer. Really, the word cancer wasn't even mentioned. Dr. Michael A. Caligiri is the director of the Comprehensive Cancer Center and chief executive officer of the James Cancer Hospital and Soul Love Research Institute. He is the J.L. Maracas Nationwide Insurance Enterprise Foundation Chair of Cancer Research at The Ohio State University. Dr. Caligiri is the president-elect of the AACR. I think big data is really going to transform the way we deliver care. If you think about what big data has done for the consumer, for example, think of Amazon. How now Amazon really knows each and every one of us just from ordering a book. It's going to be the same way with cancer research. From a simple profile, be it genomics, your clinical data, your pathologic data, your imaging data, putting that into a massive database, which includes millions of patients, is going to be critical for the daily practitioner to understand us in the context of other patients like us. AACR Project Genie is an international data sharing project that catalyzes precision oncology through the development of a registry that aggregates and links cancer genomic data with clinical outcomes from tens of thousands of cancer patients treated at participating institutions. And the AACR with Genie is taking a leadership approach in that. I'm incredibly proud of that. And we're going to see that assembly of big data like Genie is going to be the answer for pharma to move quicker and for patients to get drugs faster. It's really a, a wonderful, wonderful opportunity that we should all be involved in. The research that is going on amongst the membership of the AACR, the initiatives that the AACR is spearheading, Genie, prevention, um, behavioral modification, all of these things are gonna have the greatest impact on creating a cancer-free world uh, for our generation and the next generation, and the AACR is gonna be leading the charge. At a time when extraordinary progress is being made against cancer, more research funding is needed to build upon the momentum we have gained in preventing, 
treating and curing cancer. Anything less than a total national commitment to cancer research would threaten the careers of an entire generation of young investigators who are working in labs and clinics all over the country and who are dedicated to improving public health and saving more lives. So the goal of a cancer patient is to stay alive long enough to get treatment. And the only way that is going to happen is with further research and monies donated. I've been doing a lot of advocacy work. Uh, I've gone to Capitol Hill. I've talked to different congressmen and senators. We can put a man on the moon and transplant a heart. We can find cures for these diseases. No other organization in the world has the capacity, the scientific expertise and scope, and the drive to take on and meet that challenge. Therefore, we must continue to push forward with urgency and with the realization that it is the ACR's destiny to be the organization that will fundamentally change the face of cancer. Our vision is to defeat cancer by dramatically reducing cancer diagnoses and deaths while improving the quality of life for all. We will realize our vision by accelerating innovative cancer research, disseminating knowledge, and promoting collaborations. The AACR and its members will fundamentally change the face of cancer by 2025. The AACR, for 110 years, leading discoveries, targeting cures, saving lives.